the good news is that I'm going to be recording all of these sessions and posting those recordings. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder why the phone. Hmm, that is strange. Well, if you can get to a different device and do it on a different device, like a, a laptop or a tablet, that might be better because I'd like for y'all to see the whole thing. I don't know why the mobile device would be an issue. Hmm. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm recording these and, and everything, including the messages and the chat and all that kind of stuff. I am recording these. I'm going to make YouTube videos. So turn your phone sideways. OK. Uh, OK. All right. Perfect. Yeah, sounds like we've got a couple of good options here. So I'm going to go ahead and press on because, again, I want to honor your time. And if you need to go back, great. Yay. I don't want to clap and make it really loud, but just imagine me clapping really loud right now. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for your help, y'all. That's great. Um, so let's go ahead and, and press on. And like I said, you know, these will be recorded. So if you ever can't attend a session, um, great. Fantastic. Uh, if you ever can't attend a session, you can always go back and watch the recording later. Unfortunately, we won't be able to ask questions in real time, and that's kind of the nice thing about the Collaborate. So, so what we're going to cover is just some important info about the course. I know y'all have probably already looked at, through the course a good at this point, um, but just some things that are really important I want to make sure you know about. Uh, we're also going to just very briefly talk about how the course plan works, what the assignments are going to be, some, some stuff about the textbook that and the quizzes in particular that I've already had some questions about that I want to talk to you about. Uh, as well, and we are going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the writing process that you're going to be using this semester so that you do your very best possible work and get your very best possible grade. And then I wanted to show you all how to set up and use Grammarly in this class. Has anyone here ever used Grammarly before? Give me a second reply. Oh, you're going to, it's great. Um, it's, and it's free. It's fantastic. It's free. It works really well, and there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Sophia, you've used it. Do you like it? I'll, let you, I'll, I'll you know. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. All right. So we've already got a we've already got a convert. Fantastic. And I, I think um, yeah, it, it's definitely worth taking the time to download, and it's free. So no reason not to do it. Um, so also note on the side here, this little note I've got for you. The way that this is get, these are going to be rated is that Blackboard is kind of keeping track of everything we're doing right now including like who comes in the room, how long they stay, all that kind of stuff. So this is how I'm going to take a, attendance, so to speak, and make sure you get your points for the session for coming in. So you don't need to like email me later or anything and be like, hey, I attended the session. Um, it, it will be recorded, okay? And I appreciate everyone being here. I really do. I think some, some other folks might show up eventually, but we're going to go ahead and move on. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Hopefully that's coming up okay for everybody. If not, you know, let me know. Um, so, again, this is a little bit of a refresher, but just so that everyone's clear, uh, the college has really strict policies about late work. And so, with some very extreme exceptions, late work, I, I can't accept it. So, please don't, you know, email me and ask again unless you've got some pretty extreme documented circumstances, which are outlined in the English department policies. Um, we don't offer extra credit in online English classes, and we don't drop grades. So just be aware that everything does count, and yeah. But obviously, y'all are already here, and you're you're in it to win it. So um, it is required that any uh, like attached documents that you submit for assignments, they have to be done in Microsoft Word. And that's because, well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one, you can actually run Grammarly as an extension through that. And I'm going to show that to you because it's fantastic. The other is, if it's in the wrong kind of format, like pages or something, I probably won't be able to open it. And then I'll have, you know, I'll have to go back and forth with email. It's just like a whole thing. So um, you can get Office 365 for free as long as you're a student. If you need some help getting that set up, let me know. But basically, just Google it, like free Microsoft for students. And then you just give them an email address, and you're good to go as long as you're a student. It's pretty great. Um, you do have to take attendance, and it is required, especially with a class this short, that y'all attend not necessarily collaborate sessions weekly. Those you only need to do three, though it is great if you can come to all of them. 
but the way I take attendance is through turning in assignments. So do make sure you turn those in. And then anytime you need to contact me, don't ever hesitate to send me an email. I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It's really helpful though, actually the college requires that you use your, your student Gmail account just for like security reasons. And also that way I can identify you pretty quickly versus like if it's your Yahoo account or whatever. It might go into a, my spam folder too if you do that. And I want that to happen to you. All right, moving on. I told you I don't want to take up too much of your time. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to already look at the course plan for the class. This is a really, really important document because it's got all the assigned readings and all of the actual assignments and also when the collaborate sessions are going to be and all that important stuff. So it's crystal ball into your future and when you go in and open the document it should look something like this. Um, again, note that it's got the, the uh, se session for collaborates listed on there. If those ever change uh, for whatever reason, I'll let you all know as soon as possible. I won't, you know, unless some kind of crazy emergency happens, it'll definitely be at least the day before. Um, and I won't bring it sooner. I'll, I'll push it off later, you know, obviously. Um, so just stay frosty, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but I, I really don't have any plans to change them. It's just something wonky or weird happens, which that's that's life, right? So we will um, we'll make sure you, you know about that with plenty of time to readjust. Um, so again, you know, we're going by weeks here. You'll have certain assignments. You'll have certain readings that you need to do. We're going to talk about the textbook in just a second. And then everything's always due. Well, not always. Sometimes there will be things due on Thursdays and sometimes there will be things due on Sundays. So just be aware of that and, and take a good close look at the due date on the course plan because, because it's a flex start course and everything's really condensed. Um, I mean, we have to cover the same amount of material as a 16 week course. So there are going to be some weeks where you're going to have stuff due on Thursday and on Sunday because there's just really no other way to cover everything. So just uh, make sure you keep up with that. And I'll put that out in weekly announcements too so that you don't, you, know, you have reminders and stuff. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, sorry, I make robot noises when, <laughs> when I'm thinking. I'll try not to do that too much. Um, drives my husband crazy. So I've got a list also in the course plan of the assignments for the course. Notice there are two major essay assignments. It's a good idea when you have a minute to go ahead and look ahead at the essay assignments, you can just start thinking about them. Um, the, long, the more time you can spend thinking ahead of time and planning ahead of time for a paper, generally speaking, the better you're going to do. And again, we're going to go over the writing process for that for your assignments. Uh, we've got some quizzes, grammar quizzes that'll be in Blackboard. Uh, these collaborate sessions, you get 10 points for, for three of them. Um, so you'll get 10 points for coming today and then 10 points for to the other ones that you do. It's not like, you know, it, it's up to three. So that hopefully that makes sense. You're not like, I went to seven. Why don't I get 70 points? No, it's, it's up to three. But I hope you, you do attend these regularly because we're going to be going over like really important stuff having to do with your papers and research and citation and how to use the databases and all kinds of stuff that I'd hate for you to miss. So, and it's a good way to actually interact with each other in a real way. I know I'm doing a lot of talking. It doesn't seem terribly interactive, but we'll take some, some time for questions at the end, okay? Um, the Meet Me discussion board, which you know is due this week, and the orientation quiz. I know uh, I've actually got two sections of this class that are both accessing this at the same time. So you're, if you're in the FW2 class, I'm sorry there was that broken link with the orientation quiz. It should be fixed now. If you have any issues with that, let me know. Uh, we've got some journals that are going to be related to doing some brainstorming for your essays. Uh, the Revel quizzes, we'll talk about those in a little bit, but they, they do add up to, to quite a bit, and that's what you're going to do through the Revel software. So annotated bibliographies for the, the essays and some discussion boards, again, related to the essays. A grammar test that's going to cover everything that was uh, covered in those chapter, those assigned chapters from the Rebel Tech and also that were covered in the grammar quizzes. And then, of course, a final exam, which as y'all hopefully saw, uh, the college for accreditation purposes does require that 101 online students take the final exam at the testing center on campus. So we've got some time to, to make arrangements for that. But if you're, 
out of state or out of the country or whatever, you'll need to contact me as soon as possible so that we can tell what's going to happen. Okay? We'll get you sorted, but it takes time. So, uh, again, it's got to be pretty extreme circumstances to, to do something like that. But we'll talk about that at the, at the end if you want to. So, in course content in Blackboard, you've got those weekly folders. That'll cover everything. Um, so, be, make sure you're checking in with those every single week. Um, just as an example, our first week, we've got the link to this session, and you'll get the link to each week in, in that week's folder. I'll also put them out in announcements, and uh, it'll have the objectives, the tasks, links to the assignments, like everything you need nice and neat in each folder, okay? Boop, boop, boop. All right. Ooh, I did it again. Sorry. Um, the textbook. So there are a few ways to get access to it, but really the easiest one, especially if you've got book vouchers, is to access the code at the Greenwell Tech Store, or you can go directly through Pearson. Uh, I think Peer I think the bookstore charges more. I mean, I usually do but as a markup. That's how they make money. I don't make any money, but they do. And um, if you go directly through Pearson, it might be cheaper, but you can't use book vouchers that way. So, And then something that I've already had some questions about for students is about the loose leaf version. That is included with the cost of the access code. And basically, you're going to give them a an address and they will mail a loose leaf version of it. You can put, it's like, yeah, it's it's not bound together. You need to put it in a spiral, not spiral, sorry, a, um, a three-hole punch notebook. Uh, and you will be allowed to use that on the final exam. So, yeah, it's, it'll be a, hopefully a good thing for you to have. Um, and this also, the Pearson, which the best way to go ahead and get access to everything is to go in course content where those weekly folders are. There's a link up at the top that says Open Pearson, that's where you're going to go. Um, so Lauren is asking, are we required to have a loose leaf? You're not. It's the same book as what you've got online, but it comes free. So I, I mean, all you got to do is give them an address and they'll send it to you anyway. So um, now if you didn't have that, you wouldn't have a handbook to use the final exam. So that would be the, I guess, downside of not um, not having the loose leaf. So like I said, it's it comes automatically when you sign up, when you they just send it to whatever address you give them. It doesn't cost anything extra. So um, unless you really don't want them to have your address or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, I think it takes a little while too to show up, but every all the readings and quizzes and everything are in the online version of the Rebel. So there's, there's really no rush. It's just some students really like to have the, the loose leaf to look at and reference while they're working on papers and stuff. So that's why we asked if they would throw them to the uh, to the bundle there for you guys. Hopefully that answered your question, Lauren. Okay, so one thing I wanted to point out, and this is, I'm really glad y'all are here to hear about this. Um, something that's not so fantastic about Rebel, a couple of things about the Rebel quizzes, is that when you look in my grades in Blackboard, it's not going to say chapter one quiz. It's going to have the date, it's going to be called the date that the quiz is due. So the chapter one quiz, which is the first full quiz, is going to be labeled in my grades as September 29 because that's when it's due. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> we can't change that. We have begged and pleaded with the textbook people, like, is there any way we can have power over the name naming conventions to these quizzes and for some reason they just can't make that happen for us so that's why I'm explaining it to you now um, another thing to note too if you go in and you take the quiz and you don't immediately see the grade this is something you may have noticed as well um, it, it may not come up right away because I have to go in and do something called a, a manual grade refresh for the rebel quizzes because it's I'll, I'll spare you the technical stuff. Basically, I have to click a button. <laughs> and until I click that button, it's going to stay blank. So I'm going to try to click the button at least every day. But if you don't notice your grade coming up right away, don't panic. I just need to do the grade refresh, OK? And then and it'll show up, OK? Yeah? All right. But it is worth it. It's a good program. So, so you, you know, can't have it all, right? So those are the little kind of things we got to deal with, unfortunately. Okay, so you're going to be, oh, 
it kind of squeezed it squeezed the organized and put the oh we got some more people joining the session excellent um, it squeezed the word organize uh, unfortunately you know PowerPoint can be uh, so one of the things we're gonna be on pretty extensively this semester is learning how to use the writing process to write good essays I mean that's that's really the whole point right good writing is not about talent I know a lot of students feel that way like I get a lot of students who say oh I'm just not a naturally gifted writer I'm just not naturally good at writing well my mama has a saying and it's this we're only born knowing how to do two things mess our pants and complain and everything else we gotta learn right so like everything else good writing is about following a, a, a specific process and so that's what I'm here to teach y'all how to do um, so what a lot of students unfortunately do is they start with the draft and then they end with the draft and that's what they turn in and most of the time it's not very good and they don't get a very good grade and then they tell themselves oh I'm just not naturally good at this right but you can see on either side of that step there are other steps there are things that need to come before the draft and there are things that need to come after the draft so spending some time actually coming up with ideas not while you're writing the paper but beforehand what we call the invention process actually I can use the pen here or pencil or whatever you want to call it oh yeah look at that the invention process is really important and there's a lot of things that you can do a lot of techniques but the discussion boards and journals and everything you're going to be working on this semester are going to give you an opportunity to to do some of this brainstorming and inventing. Uh, one of the one of the things I personally like to do is to spend some time asking myself questions. I know that seems kind of silly, but if I've got a topic in mind, I'll just ask myself stuff about it, and then and then I'll spend some time writing answers to myself basically what we call free writing and the only rule about free writing is that you just set yourself a time to write and it doesn't have to be any good because you're not going to turn it in just like spend some time you know blabbing to yourself a little bit a lot of the answers are already in you or at least good ideas anyway and then a lot of times too you can get some good nuggets from the free write and turn those into a list and maybe evenize those into a mind map uh, or you could you can conceivably skip the mind map. I like them because I'm a visual person, but uh, you could go ahead and take that list and organize it to something more like an essay, because people don't really think in essay format, something more like an essay uh, with an outline. And you are gonna turn in outlines this semester and we can make sure those are going in the right direction. You got a good plan and you're in a good position to draft and that, that is when you actually sit down and like hammer something out, right? So you should never sit down in front of a blank screen with no idea with what about what you're going to talk about. Uh, that usually doesn't go very well. And it's stressful, I think, especially if you haven't left yourself a whole lot of time. Let's not do that to ourselves, right? Because after that comes a whole lot more work. The next step is not to go through and proofread and clean, gussy everything up. That comes last, but to spend some time revising. And a big part of that is making big picture changes, cutting, adding, rearranging, taking some time to like step back and rethink your approach and what you're doing. Um, but getting feedback from your classmates and from me, um, and even going to the campus's writing center, which there is a link to setting up appointments for that in course syllabus and information, that can be a really helpful if you can come on campus. And once you've done that, made, made your big picture changes, then and only then is it really time to focus on the nitpicky stuff, right? The really fancy pantsy kind of polishing. And that's where Grammarly can be very helpful, but also the Writing Center can help with that too. So uh, it does work. It is, it, this process does work. I didn't make it up, okay? <laughs> it, it's the process because it's, you know, it, it does the job, it gets it done. So it doesn't take talent, it just takes time on task. So moving on. Well, don't worry, we'll be spending a lot of time going over this for the semester and you'll have a lot of opportunities to practice this. Okay, so Grammarly. Um, again, Sophia's tried it, she's a believer, and hopefully you will be too by the end of the semester. I've noticed that it's really helped uh, in my other classes, my, my classes that weren't flex starts, that started the semester. I've had an opportunity to read their writing already, and um, it really does seem to be helping quite a bit with a lot of the kind of typo, smaller stuff that a little harder for maybe people to notice, but also 
bigger issues as well, like verb use and um, using the right word, using apostrophes correctly, and all that kind of stuff that just can be taxing. And it's free, all you got, but you do have to create an account. Once you create that account, I'll just tell you right now, they are going to email you a good bit asking you to up, upgrade to the premium. Just ignore those. That's the price you pay, I guess. Um, once you access really, oh, you get your account, you can use it across devices, and it's cool because it remembers you, it remembers what your issues are, it remembers um, you know, what, what things in particular you tend to struggle with, so it'll look for those, I guess, more closely. And then there's a lot of options for how to use it, and I'm going to take you through a few, a few of them. One is to upload a document directly to the website. It's okay. Um, you can you do that after the fact. Or I really like the extensions that you can have running in your browsers as you work. I've got Grammarly running all the time, and I, it's really helped me avoid some some pretty embarrassingly bad errors and like emails and and assignment instructions and things like that that I probably wouldn't have have noticed because you know none of us is perfect, right? So let's talk about what your options are. So once you create your account and you go into Grammarly. Again, there's the option to upload a document directly to the program and then it'll go through and kind of point everything out that it found to you. It's not perfect, but uh, that's one option. Like you just upload an attached document and it'll go through and point out errors. What I like though are the, like I said, the extensions, the apps. Um, so the way that you get to that is where, where it says apps on the side and then what, it, what you can have it running for is for Office. That includes PowerPoint, uh, obviously Microsoft Office Word, and then you can have it running for Windows. So what you'll see is like a red button that says install. You'll have to do like a run and all, run the program and everything. You can also set it up so it's running in Chrome as an extension so that anything you do in Blackboard, like discussion boards, journals, whatever, uh, if you're doing it in Chrome, Grammarly will still be running for you. So that's really nice. Like I said, it's, it, I've noticed it's really helped my, my other students in their work so far, so I really hope it does for you too. Um, for the Word program, make sure you don't have, when you download it, make sure you don't have Word already open. Wait until after you've downloaded it. This is like the biggest issue students tend to have. Like, well, I don't see the button, not a button. Um, I'm like, okay, exit out of Word and then go back after you downloaded Grammarly. And then what you'll see over up here in the corner is a button that says Open Grammarly. And then what it'll do is it'll either run on the side while you're working, or it will, you can have it do it after the fact, okay? So this probably looks a lot to you just like a spell and grammar check, right? But here's what I think is really cool about it. If you click on the actual thing that they're trying to get you to change, it'll give explanation of why you might want to change it. You know, why you might want to use a comma there, why you don't need an apostrophe, why you should. So it's teaching you as you work. So I think that's a pretty great feature. And again, it remembers you and what your more common issues are. So that's pretty neat, too. Okay, so I know that was kind of a whirlwind, but I wanted to leave some time uh, for questions. So if there's anything, you know, right now immediately that y'all are having questions about, whether it's about Revel or what have you, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and ask over in the chat. Like I said, I don't have the audio on because then it would get really noisy, but I will stick around to answer questions. Um, otherwise, if you don't have anything that you want to ask me, you are free to go. And I'll see you hopefully next week at the next session. Yes, Nye. Uh, Rebel only allows you to take the quiz once. So just take your time. It's not, um, I know some textbook programs are based on completion. You get multiple tries, but unfortunately, yeah, Rebel is only set up for an attempt per quiz. So take your time. Anything else? Lauren, uh, no, they don't have to be, and they actually don't. Yeah, you're welcome, Nye. Uh, I'm, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, so Lauren's 
first question, do all of our papers have to be edited by the Writing Center? At, no, absolutely not. In fact, they don't edit. It's more of a tutoring uh, service offered, and they won't go through and edit with you. They will point out issues that, that they are seeing. It also can help a bit of stuff that's not just sentence level grammar and spelling. Um, appointment to go. No, you are not required to do that. It's just something that I think is a really helpful resource and can really help. So, Sophia wants to have for these lectures. So, you can have it. Um, Blackboard records when you come in and come out of the sessions. So, I can go back after the fact and I can see, all right, Sophia came in at this time. She stuck around for the whole session. And then I can go into the Blackboard gradebook and give you your 10 points. So you don't need to email me or anything. Like anything else? Hmm. Okay. Well, it looks like Sophia might still be typing something, but anybody else? Any other questions? Oh, yes. So Lauren, if you can't make a session, yes. So I'm going to post the recording of this today. I'm, I'm going to record every session, and I'm going to post the link to the recording each time. It's just, again, it's nice to be able to do the live chat like this so that you, if you do have questions, you can stop me as I'm explaining things. You know, y'all don't have to, don't worry about being impolite and being like, wait a minute, can you explain that again or whatever. Um, you're probably not the only one. So uh, if you can't make a session, though, I, I will post the links to the recordings throughout the semester. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you all so much for coming, and I really appreciate it. I know it's it's tricky to, to do stuff like this, and I appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now, but I am going to leave the room open. So if anybody needs to, to ask any additional questions, um, I'll leave it running in the background, okay? All right. Y'all have a great week, and I look forward to reading your Meet Me posts. Thanks again so much.